Hi, it's Colleen. Welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to share this video with you. It's part two of my 18th century stays project. And as you know from the first video, I've completed a mock-up and ended up making several changes to the pattern. The pattern came from this envelope. It's Simplicity 8162, and it is the 18th century stays by American Duchess. So I made several different alterations to that pattern in order to fit me. And if you're curious about what lessons I learned about fitting stays, go ahead and watch that video. But now I'm going to put all those lessons into practice and make the finished pair. I've completed it, so I'm going to rewind the clock and show you a little bit about how that project was done. And then I'm going to try them on for the very first time fully complete today. And I'm excited to show you. So come along with me. Here are my final pattern pieces. I ended up dropping down to a 14 for the back, side back, and side front pieces but this side front piece still has that curve as an alteration to go with the front piece, which is still the larger size. My measurement said I should have been in a size 20, but I'm essentially in a size 14 with a full bust measurement. One of the things that they do say is that if you are squishier, you can lace down tighter and it's not like I'm lacing it super tight. I just squish easily. That's the final pattern. I'll set that aside. This is my fashion fabric. It's a half a yard of 60 inch wide fabric that does not have any stretch. And I remember I got this at a store that was doing a dollar sale. So 50 cents for this piece of fabric. A friend's mother's sewing room came my way after her mother passed away. So this was free, that was in there, and that's just white canvas for the interlining. And then this was also free. This is just a piece of muslin that also came in a pile of fabric that came my way. So 50 cents worth of fabric plus the mock-up that I did was uh, made from a piece of fabric that a friend gave me. So that didn't cost me anything. Then I have zip ties. So I bought this big bag of 100 zip ties on Amazon and I'm probably going to use just over half of that and I'll put that price up here as well. So using thrifted gifted materials plus some smart shopping on Amazon means I am making this corset for very little money and I'm really excited about it because as much as I would like to buy a custom corset I'm just not at that place in my hobby yet. Someday would I buy a custom made corset? Sure but today is not that day. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this out tomorrow and hopefully I will have a finished corset or stays within about a week. It's a new day and I have completed sewing together the stays and I've sewn all of the boning channels and the eyelets will go here and then again on the front side here and here. I'm going to go ahead and put the boning in. That's going to require shaping it. The way you do that is you cut it with the scissors and then file off the end. So I have a nail file here. I have my boning material. I am using zip ties for most of it. One thing I noticed on the mock-up is that this tended to buckle a little bit, this edge um, where the lacing was. And I feel like zip tie just wasn't quite strong enough. So I thought about doing two zip ties in that channel, but I do have some Ridgeline boning from previous projects in my stash. It's half inch wide and it's just a little, like it doesn't, flop around quite as much. I don't think I have enough to bone the whole thing with the Ridgeline, but I am going to put it around those lacing holes on both sides just to give a little extra stability there. And I might even put in two pieces in the channel just to make sure it doesn't buckle because that was really one of the problems on the mock-up is it felt like they were doing this as I was lacing it, right? They were kind of twisting and turning like that. And I think it just needs a little more stability. Long story short, it is time to cut them file them and insert them in the boning channels before I can sew up and bind these edges. So that's my next job.
There you go. That's two pieces of Ridgeline in that lacing panel and it's nice and sturdy, nice and strong. And by comparison, here was two pieces of zip tie and you can see how flexible it is. This is much sturdier and I think that'll be better. But for the rest of it, zip ties are fine and that's what I use for my mock-up. So now I should be able to harvest the bones from the mock-up for most of these channels. I did change the boning channel pattern slightly, so I'll probably have to cut some new ones, but for the most part they should work. So I'm going to go ahead and pull things out of here for the corresponding channel here and I'll follow the same process of cutting, shaping, and filing off those edges. Completely done with that. So that's great. What I'm learning from American Duchess is that these seam allowances should be tacked down. So I'm going to work on doing that by hand. I'm going to take care of those and I need to figure out when to put in the, the grommets. I'm assuming it's before you go through all the trouble of binding everything because if you screw up this panel, for example, you don't want to have to rebind all of that stuff. You can just recut it, re-sew it, and go from there. I hand stitched a folded edge right along here and then stitched a basting stitch right within the seam of that other boning channel. It's kind of a close call, but once I set the grommets, then I can fold the other piece of the lining over this line and tack it down. So I think it's going to be just fine. I am discovering, however, that my wrist injury is just not going to allow for uh, a lot of hand sewing. So I'm kind of sad about it, but that's part of the reason why I started a YouTube channel. It gives me the creative outlet that comes from making videos. So thank you guys for watching. It's meaningful to me. In the meantime, I went ahead and, oh gosh, I'm gonna get emotional. I wanted to hand sew these eyelets, but I just can't, I just can't. It, I, I had to take a couple days away from sewing because my wrist just hurts and I, there's no way I could do 40 some eyelets by hand and sew on a binding by hand and put in a lining by hand. I just, I can't do it all. So I am going to go ahead and do metal grommets uh, and I just bought the kit online for that. That's a change in plans and I'm disappointed but I was telling my husband about it and like he said, you know, you're already putting in cable ties to bone the thing just go ahead and do what you got to do for the rest of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm sad, but I'm going to go ahead and make it work. The reality is it's going to take me a couple more days to recuperate from my last batch of hand sewing. And then I'm going to have to switch to machine and grommets instead of hand sewn stuff. It's okay. I will live. I'm marking holes for my eyelets and I'm going to use this Nifty Notions Flex Gauge. It's basically just this handy little accordion shaped doohickey that allows you to very quickly and easily space out your buttonholes or your eyelets or whatever it is that you're marking. Place the top hole on the top eyelet mark and then gradually change how much or how little it's open until that basically marks the eyelets evenly. To me it's a little hard to read the markings on the tool itself but if you have something like a pattern, it's really easy to just adjust until it's right. So there we go. That marks out all of my eyelets. One thing I did already was measure how far from the top the first hole is. So from there, I'm going to just mark down the center of that boning channel. And you just want to make sure your tool is lined up evenly along there. And then I'll just take my pencil and very quickly and easily mark the holes. Now I am doing spiral lacing and spiral lacing has a slightly different pattern. So about 5 8 inch away from the top I'm going to put a second eyelet and then on the other side I'll do 5 8 inch away from the bottom eyelet. When I was doing my mock-up it was far easier for me to do the spiral lacing on myself than it was to try and manage the crisscross lacing. That's my eyelets marked and I can't do anything about them until my grommet tools come on Saturday. Today is Thursday. That was super easy and this is the tool. 
So here are my stays with metal grommets. The issue is I bought a little kit and let me see if I can show you. Do you see how the inside of these grommets, it's raggedy. They went in really easily with the exception of the a dull punch that came in the kit. That was kind of a pain. But the inside of those grommets is like raggedy. It doesn't seem to be snagging this twill tape, but I wonder how the tape will hold up over time. And I guess I just figure, you know, tape is cheap and until such time as I can buy a little rasp or something to put in there and file those down, I will just replace the cording if it gets to be too much. Pardon the hat and the no makeup. I just was having a work day, so I didn't bother getting ready, but I couldn't wait to try on these stays. I went ahead and put in all of the grommets and had to lace it up just to see how it fits. I have not cut all the tabs yet. So here's what I know. They feel awesome, number one. They feel like they really are fitting well. I have excellent support up in here. I've got a nice lacing gap there and about three inches in the back. I measured it with a tape measure wrapped around here. So about three inches in the back. But the waist is too long at the moment and it's making it rise up into my armpits. So I'm gonna cut this right here a little bit higher into the seam and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut these tabs so that they can splay out like they're supposed to. And then I'll see how the lacing is at that point. They feel fantastic. And it's in this, you know, non-stretch fabric. So going down a size across the back, making a couple adjustments on the side seam, um, they feel great. They feel really great. Other than the fact that they're digging in right here, but I know what that's from. These tabs just need to be cut up about another, I don't know, half an inch. Maybe that's it. And that'll release the tension at this point. The pattern calls for quarter inch double fold bias tape. I just thought it would be easier to use this twill tape. The nice thing is that this has sort of got texture to it. As I sew with my machine, it's less likely to show stitches if I come up on it than it would if it were bias tape. It's got this sort of woven texture in it and it's really easy to find online. I've been buying these giant rolls on Amazon and you can get all different widths. So it's just really handy to have on hand just cotton bias tape. What I'm gonna do is stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge and just go slow around those curves. And then when it comes time to fold it over, I will show you some of the tricks that I learned for doing that. I have folded over that edge to the inside and I am using these wonder clips. I don't like them for regular sewing, but they're perfect for an application like this where it's stiff and it's hard to pin into these bones. And so this way you can just clip it on there and it'll hold it really well until you're ready to sew. Now around the curves, you do have to clip the bias tape in order to get it to turn. It is a little bit tricky. You just have to go slow around those areas. So I did stick some regular pins in there, but you can see, I'm gonna just go along the whole thing. It's ready to roll. The other thing I did was I basted down these corners and I just used some orange thread so I could see to pull it out. But I went ahead and basted those down nice and tight because I wanna make sure that they're even, you know, it's a nice neat fold. So I'll pull out that orange stitching when the time comes. This is the top edge. I have no illusions that it will go this easily around those tabs at the bottom. But you know, if I can save my wrist by doing both top edges by machine, then maybe I can hand sew the bottom edges, but oh, that looks so crisp and nice. I have no idea if this is right or wrong, but this is what I did. I went ahead and machine stitched this binding on everywhere where I had a straight seam. So around all of these corners and up into the tabs. Then I backstitched and cut the thread and kind of coaxed this around the corner but left it loose. I don't know if you can see that. So I just left this little loop loose and then proceeded to stitch again. At each outside corner, I have clipped the binding so it can turn smoothly over that corner, just like that. So that's gonna look all right around those corners when I get it in there. Then what I've decided though, is before I stitch down these straight edges, cause they're easy, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these corners, getting all those done first and then going back through and tacking down 
the rest of the tabs. Plan worked great. The only hand sewing I had to do was around these top pieces here and I did hand sew on the back right at the bottom of each tab but I was able to machine stitch up the side of each tab after I got this done. I'm so happy and it looks awesome. I have the lining all ready. It's sewn up. It just needs to be stitched in. This is the part that I am a little unsure of how to do precisely. So I want it to be nice and neat on the inside, even though I know nobody's actually going to see it. There, I'm discovering on camera. I should have just like the lining was put in on this piece before we started stitching and assembling the corset, I should have also put a piece of lining in here. There's no going back. That grommet's in there and I can't take it out. So I am going to just put the binding up about that far and then I need to just fold over and tack this into place as I go. Fold it over, stitch it down, move to the next section and go from there. But probably the first thing I'm going to do is pin it in so that the seams are aligned at the very least and that'll give me a starting point. And actually I'm tempted to not line them. I know a lot of people don't line. We'll see how it goes. I think I would like it to look nice. Here it is. This is the first half completely lined. It took me exactly two hours and 49 minutes to stitch it in from the point where I started to pin it to where I put in the last stitch. So that's not too bad. It means I have the other half to go still, which I'll do later on tonight. But oh my goodness, does that ever look nice? Yeah, that was easier than I thought it would be. You just have to go slow and uh, work your way bit by bit. Well, it didn't take me a week, it took me two weeks, but that's okay. Here are the finished stays and I could not be happier with them. They feel really, really good. I feel like I have plenty of support here. It comes in nicely at the waist. It gives you the silhouette you're looking for. I'm really glad I added the length on the front of these tabs. I think that's really nice. There's the back and I have a nice even lacing gap there. So between the back and the front, I have about three inches gap total that I can use to adjust the stays as my body changes. Hopefully I can lose some of the weight I gained over the last couple of years and I can still wear these stays because there's room to adjust them down. The tabs end right at my natural waist so I have plenty of movement. They're not cutting off my air at all. I can breathe just fine with them. No problems at all. They're super comfortable. So for a first pair of stays, I really couldn't be happier with this. To me, they look just like they should. And I'm thrilled to have gotten past what I think is one of the most difficult parts of historical sewing is constructing undergarments like this. So many people have posted videos and blogs about this process in the past, and I was able to learn from the mistakes of people who have gone before me. And that helped me avoid some things that I think would have been really easy to mess up on. So for everybody out there who is posting content, I thank you for the help because it made me much more successful than I would have been otherwise. And hopefully this video will help someone else be successful. The tabs tend to come out just a little bit from my body. That's probably the only thing I don't like, but that's better with the Rigeline and the longer bones than it was on the mock-up. I mean, part of that is just my belly. My belly protrudes a little bit, but the tabs don't want to stay flat and I'm not sure what the solution is there. So if anyone knows, feel free to tell me. I am using this fun twill tape that has alphabet on it and that's because I'm a professional writer and editor in my day job and I thought it would be fun. The first time I laced these up I went from the bottom to the top and that gave me this kind of weird triangular shape in the lacing. So I undid everything and redid it from the top to the bottom and it's a much better fit. It was much easier to get them comfortable and it looks a lot better. It's this even gap down the front. However, when I did it the second time, I put in my alphabet lacing upside down. So if you are paying close attention, you may have noticed that those letters are upside down. But you know, it's just a fun thing for me to know that the alphabet's there. It's a quirky thing. A helpful tool for lacing yourself in stays is a bodkin or a blunt needle that looks a lot like this. I do know some people will also use bobby pins, but you can see that giant eye on this needle. It's plenty big to put the twill tape through and it's blunt, so I don't have to worry about stabbing myself. 
and this makes it really easy to thread the twill tape in and out of those eyelets. And if you remember, the third item from Simplicity 8162 is this bum pad. So I did make it already, that's in a previous video, and I'll show you how that looks on. It is my understanding, and I'm learning as I go, that you put on your shift, your stays, and the bum pad. And then over that goes an under petticoat and the petticoat that people will actually see. So there should be two layers resting on top of this. And as you can see, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty big and I am short waisted. So I'm not sure if there is a way to sort of cheat this a little bit. I'm going to play around with that on the final. Maybe don't tie it as tight so that it can rest slightly below my natural waist but you don't want it too low because that throws off the silhouette as well. I don't want this to be like up under my armpits, so I'll have to work around with that. So overall, I think that Simplicity 8162 is a good pattern set. Everything in it was way too big. So I'm actually becoming less and less satisfied with the shift the more I put these days off and on. It is just too big. It's too big. So the, my measurement said to make a size 20, I did. I didn't do a mock-up for a shift and I really wish I had because I put a lot of time and effort into felling these seams by hand and finishing everything off really nice only for it to be really way too big which makes it hard to put on and get this neckline and get it in the back just right. If you are making the shift from this project you probably want to size down a couple of sizes or do a mock-up. As a result I size down on the bum pad and of course I size down on the stays as I've mentioned and there's no way a 20 would have worked on my body, even though that's what my measurements said I needed. There's just no way it would have been anywhere close to fitting. Double check your measurements. Don't forget to make mock-ups. They make a huge difference, especially with complex projects like this. Anyway, this is the, the end of my stays project. Now it's on to petticoats and fish shoes and caps and the actual outfit that people will see on the outside. So I'm super excited to show you those. Anyway, take a look at some of this closing footage, some close-ups of the stays, and you can kind of see how the final project went. I'm just really, again, super happy with it, and I can't wait to start on the rest of the pieces for my 18th century outfit. Thanks so much. If you like what you see here, please go ahead and subscribe. You can go ahead and click a thumbs up if you like this video and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, you can follow me on Instagram to stay up to date on what's happening with this channel. I do post in progress shots there periodically, so you can take a look at those. Anyway, thanks for everything. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.